It has been a wild a few months, well, a few weeks since Texas passed this incredibly toxic and penalizing legislation which restricts women from having access to abortion, even in the cases of rape and incest. And as we saw over the weekend, millions of women have marched, well, millions of people, because everyone knows human rights include access to reproductive health for women. And on the line with us is our, our one of our favorite guests. We have Congressman Raja with us, and I, I, I appreciate your time. I know that you're incredibly busy. Um, but you had uh, this hearing last week where a doctor that you were trying to get some answers from refuse to answer a simple yes or no question so first of all congressman what were your thoughts in august when texas passed this horrifying legislation um i was extremely distressed it's inhumane barbaric uh not only does it you know ban uh almost all abortions after a quote-unquote fetal heartbeat is detected uh in direct contravention of roe v wade but it also sets up a, a very insidious uh, enforcement system where basically, uh, you know, bounty hunters uh, in the form of private citizens can spy on each other, family members, friends, uh, and others, and report them and get a $10,000 bounty for doing so. So it's just a horrible law, and uh, that's why I've been so outspoken on it. And when you had these hearings last week, and, and not just this hearing, but it seems to be any time we have these conversations, that when you have these meetings, these hearings, congressional uh, conversations, there, if, if someone's on the other side of it, you know, we, we've watched the drama unfold, and people regularly refuse to answer a question in yes or no. Have you, I mean, have you ever had someone, when you've said, please, a yes or no question, do they ever say yes or no? Very rarely. <laughs> I think they yeah they know they know that uh, um, you know being honest, giving the honest answer really uh, will expose them, and so they hem and haw, and that's what this witness did. Right. So tell us a little bit about a Dr. Ingrid Scope, who is a doctor out of San Antonio, has been a, has been supportive of limiting the rights of women to have access to reproductive health. Uh, you know, this exchange has gone viral. You have over a million views on our TikTok. Now, we're just starting. I mean, we you know, we put videos out there and people have reacted. But this one has had the strongest reaction. So is this your first over a million TikTok video or have you had others? I I had no idea. You just, uh, told me something I didn't know. <laughs> yes, that's why um, we were so. thrilled, and we're and we were grateful for how much you were sticking to the question and trying to hold her accountable for what she has worked to do to limit women's rights. Yeah. So basically, um, should I should I just uh, set it up like you sure? the, what 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 I actually asked? So it's it's look, I'm, my wife and I have a beautiful daughter. We have three beautiful children. We have a daughter and. Probably one of our mortal fears in life, Patty, like every parent, is uh, for her to ever be sexually assaulted or raped. And um, and so basically, you know, I was just thinking that morning, what could I ask her that's kind of personal to me and and hopefully elicits, you know, some kind of response that illuminates her thinking on this whole subject. So I basically asked the question very simply. I said, if God forbid your daughter, and she does have a daughter, by the way, I said, if God forbid your daughter were raped and became pregnant, uh, would you force her to um, carry the fetus to term? And uh, she then refused to answer the question. And I asked it like three different ways. And I even said, you're being evasive. You're not answering the question. Um, and then finally, I just gave up and I basically said, look, I know exactly why you're not answering the question, which is that you actually would want your child as a loving parent, you would want your child to have the right to ch choose. And the fact that you would have that standard for your own daughter, but adopt a different standard, a far more draconian one for all of our other children uh, daughters, sisters, and women across Texas and elsewhere ex it exposes the hypocrisy of the position that people like you adopt in this situation. And, um, and then I, I went on to say, you know, even Donald Trump, he, re he tweeted on this, even Donald Trump supports uh, a, an exception for rape and incest, and this particular law does not, which just 
shows how cruel it is. And um, anyway, that it, the exchange went on, but that was the gist of the uh, the questioning. And her reaction was, I, you know, I, st- I wor- I'm working to live in a world where making decisions about abortion are necessary, and it's so maddening because they don't. Right. That's that's absolutely no. a lie. And that it was like, yeah, it was like uh, Governor Abbott, you know, who's a real piece of work. Uh, when he was confronted with this issue of, um, you know, uh, a rape pregnancy being forced upon a woman, uh, said, we're going to eliminate rapists from Texas. And it's like, uh, you know, you have this magic solution to eliminate rape in Texas and you haven't adopted it yet uh, up till this point. I mean, that's ludicrous. And and Dr. Scott um, said, no, we're not going to be eliminating rape or incest following this law. And um, I think the bottom line is they, they just want women to, to bear the, the cost of, of those horrible crimes. It is continuing the, the trauma of rape. And, and I have to say, I am a survivor of childhood rape. Mm. And I know mm. how hard it is for you to thank you. I, I, I you know, I, it is, uh, st- it's startling to me. Uh, and it's often traumatizing for me and, and many survivors like me when we, we have these, con- we have to have these conversations. But I know and I do not speak for any other survivors. I know how important it is to continue to press for this and, and to ask these questions. Because I mean, what they have done is dug in because they have to they have to across the board, if they're going to say if they're going to say that their beliefs based on their religion is that life begins at conception which actually they believe it begins at preconception because a woman doesn't even know it, it's you know it, it's two weeks before her last cycle or whatever the four weeks before her last cycle and that statement that the doctor made that most women know that they've been raped is so painful and and dismissive of the trauma of rape survivors it, it just it was haughty right. and disgusting it was how I felt when I it heard was, her say that and, and- you know, uh, my uh, friend uh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez took up my line of question and then asked her that very that very question that you brought up, which is, um, you know, a, a, a rape survivor uh, will not know um, that she is pregnant um, usually before that six week mark, and uh, how dare you kind of imply that? Because that was her defense, Patty. Uh, to my uh, questioning ultimately, which is, you know, someone who is raped will know they're pregnant and will have time to get an abortion. And uh, that's just patently untrue. And um, anyway, it was just, it was just uh, illuminating in terms of just the double standard that they practice and, um, and why we have to oppose these types of laws with everything we got. Oh, absolutely. And I know that the work that you're doing on so many levels, you know, Joan was just talking a little bit ago about how, uh, you know, the Facebook uh, whistleblower who was talking about how they were not yes. controlling these pages where a lot of the insurrectionists were making their plans because, well, they make money off of that when people get angry. Correct. And what we have done is allow the people who are angry about uh, limiting rights and polluting the atmosphere and, uh, you know, threatening our democracy. We've allowed their anger to drive the day. And, and the people who are fighting for mitigating the horrible uh, the f- horrible fallout from climate change, the people who are fighting for people's rights, for making sure that people have clean water and fresh air, have a, can maintain a roof over their, their homes, feed, feed their families. That's the outrage that we should be out in the streets about, and we were this weekend, about women's health. And, and I, I, I'm so grateful for the hard work that you do. But I think, again, that rage, we are seeing some of it. That's why your video got over a million views, because people were really championing the fact that you were trying to hold her accountable for her, first, her actions, and second, for her inability to answer the question. I, I, I have to keep asking you, like, I, if I were you, I don't know how, like, do you meditate in order to con- maintain your composure in an exchange like that? <laughs> Something? I- I don't know uh, what I did that day, but um, it was, uh, it, it, I think what I, what, I, what I try to do as much as I can during those question lines is um, I try to keep my language simple and I just try to think about, um, you know, so the, the real people that it affects. Um, sometimes I can get pretty emotional, Patty, when I think about, you know, whether it's my family member, my daughter, my wife, my, 
you know, my friend, anybody that I know that uh, for whom this really matters. And, and then I get emotional when I hear, uh, you know, a witness uh, refuse to answer a question or, uh, or, 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 or is dismissive. And um, I, I know she knows exactly what she was doing and, um, you know, shame on her. Absolutely. Again, we're talking to Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy of the Congressional 8th District in Illinois, over by the, the Schaumburg area. I know it's bigger than that. Uh, actually, what are some of the rest of the suburbs that you have or the area that you cover? Oh, my goodness. It's, uh, it's got about 40 uh, towns and oh. cities, but it goes all the way from um, O'Hare. Mm-hmm. I have all the runways of O'Hare, but not the terminals, by the way. <laughs> uh, it goes from O'Hare to Elgin. Uh, and then from Wheeling all the way down to parts of Oak Brook. And the heart of it um, is Schaumburg and Hoffman Estates, Elk Grove Village, Palatine, that area. Uh, I live in Schaumburg. And in Illinois, we have, in our state legislature, taken steps to make sure that women have their full access to abortion yes. care, to health care rights. What are you hearing from your constituents? Because we are, obviously the, the threat is looming uh coming coming up with the supreme court and how they will rule uh, their absence of reacting to this original bill uh is uh, galling but what are you what are your constituents telling you going into the next uh period of of trying to fight this so thankfully we live in a state in illinois where um women's reproductive rights are jealously guarded and protected in the law in fact so much so that there's even a trigger where if for some reason Roe were overturned at, at the Supreme Court level, additional protections would go into place in Illinois. And so um, that's, in fact, why so many people from other states are coming here again, Patty, because uh, the restrictive laws there prevent them from exercising their choice. So they have to travel all the way here. In fact, I did a, a press conference with Governor Pritzker, as well as a couple of my colleagues from the congressional delegation uh, at the Planned Parenthood Clinic in uh, Aurora recently. And they said that they were already seeing people from Texas flying up here. And I mean, I, I think one of them said that um, somebody had to drain her whole life savings out of her bank account oh. to fly up to, to Illinois to, to have this procedure. I mean, what kind of a that 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 that's so that's so cruel to me that you'd set up a situation where uh, you would force uh, a woman to do that, and yet that is the, the the world we live in right now. And we will continue to be a uh, I, I think a, a welcoming place for those people um, as long as this happens. When you have a hearing like this with the oversight committee that you had last week, what steps can can you take? with a fellow Democrats in order to fight for reproductive health? Because if it's at the state level right now, I'm, I'm wondering what steps can be really put in place, what efforts can, are out there right now at the federal level? I think that the most important thing is to codify Roe v. Wade. Yes, please. The law. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, please. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's called the... Uh, Women's Health Protection Act. We voted on it two weeks ago. It goes to the Senate. Unfortunately, um, you know, things get filibustered in the Senate. And so uh, we'll see how this is treated there. The one thing that I can say is that even some Republicans, I think, will be very reluctant to, uh, uh, you know, stand by, you know, Texas's SB8, for instance, because it is so um, horrible and inhumane. All that being said, we have to continue to push. Also, election matter, Patty, who would have thought that Donald Trump would have had the opportunity to seat three Supreme Court justices in four years? That exactly. was yeah. that was extraordinary and unusual, but that's what happens. Elections have consequences, and we have to remember that uh, every time we go out. And, and, and now I am pushing the White House uh, uh, to do everything they can to nominate people to the courts, the federal court system, who will abide by the rule of law and observe precedent and so forth, uh, because, you know, our, our, our rights depend on it. Yeah, I, I, that absolutely has to be the case, because when you talk about Republicans who might 
uh, not stand behind SB8. The issue is that they don't want to vote against anything that uh, allows the exp- expansion of abortion because now that it's been scaled back in Texas, they don't want to be held uh, sort of held to the fire on their from their party because they have become a party of extremists and you know somehow trigger this the, this radical right that will come after them in their elections. So it seems like a really, I, I don't have any faith in Republicans uh, doing anything to to help uh, repeal SB8 or do anything in reaction to it. But that's just me. I could be wrong. Could, could I be wrong? I, I, mm, I think, unfortunately, you're right. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, the only way that it's going to be corrected again is at the federal level and yeah. having a national, you know, national protection. I know that Biden administration is currently putting lawsuits forward to try to overturn SBA. Uh, some of those might be successful, by the way. But, um, again, I think that here in Illinois, we have to be a safe haven and we have to do everything we can to protect our rights uh, and, and welcome those who choose to exercise theirs as well. Absolutely. Well, I'm so grateful for your time. I, I forgot to ask your folks how much time you had, so I'm going to assume that I've gone p- past what they wanted you to do. <laughs> So I thank, thank you so, you so much. much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And I would love to have you on the show again sometime. Uh, do me a favor. Go fix the country. We'll be here when you're done. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> I know. You know. You know what I mean. I, I really, we're, we're so grateful for your work and uh, take care of yourself and we'll talk to you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you so much, sir. And everyone can go to krishnamorthy.house.gov for more information about all the great work that he's doing.